sweat squishing between my butt cheeks and out. And there's just really no graceful way to check. As a crone sufferer, I appreciate the value of a really good toilet brush. Uh, there's nothing quite as embarrassing as having company over when your toilet looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. Uh, and because of my Crohn's disease, I have to eat like a six-year-old, which is mostly great, except I find the white glue is really hard on the system. So I'm gay. Shocking, I know, yeah. Um, and I find that when I share this information with people of a certain age, they think we're sharing secret kinks. Uh, so now I know that Bob in finance likes to be pissed on. <laughs> I have to live with that. Uh, Crohn's also makes sex complicated. People ask me if I'm a top or a bottom, and I tell them it really depends on what I had for lunch. <laughs> I'm kind of like a magic eight ball. You don't really know what you're going to get until you flip me over. <laughs> All signs point to no. <laughs> so as a gay man, I have a primal fear of vaginas. I think it's the teeth. Um, I've also decided I'm going to start measuring dicks in metric. I think it's just going to sound better. Like, my uh, imaginary boyfriend, um, his dick is at least 20.32 centimeters large. <laughs> I know. You can iPhone that later. <laughs> I was dating a guy a little while ago, and he broke up with me, and he told me that I was too crazy to date. I told him it was really nice of him to notice. <laughs> I mean, I have three cats. I've been listening to the CBC, so I'm basically a seven-year-old woman. <laughs> In high school, my nickname was Wednesday Adams, uh, which might have hurt my feelings if I had any. <laughs> but you know, I'm not really sure if my relationship goals are more Bert and Ernie or Stadler and Waldorf. <laughs> On second thought, I'm not that into fisting. <laughs> But really, what I ultimately want in a relationship is I just want someone to say those three little words that everyone longs to hear. I just want someone to say, Ryan, you were right. <laughs> I was a little obsessed with Vulcans growing up from Star Trek. I'm not sure if it's their fanatical adherence to uh, logic, the spiffy haircut, or their general disdain for the human race. I think it's mostly the last one. Um, the other day, I panicked, and I super liked someone that I work with on Tinder, which I thought thing was going to make things really awkward, but so far, nobody's mentioned his disappearance. <laughs> um, I went on this really bad date at a shitty restaurant, and of course, I ordered wine, but it ended up tasting like paint thinner, which I kind of thought was a plus, because I figured I would either go blind or drop dead before the entrees arrived. <laughs> I'm a bit socially awkward. I mean, I find it hard to maintain conversations with people that I find attractive, but really it's rude to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> uh, I think dating rules are really stupid, like I'm not supposed to sleep with someone until the third date, and I just find that by then the corpse starts to smell funny. <laughs> So, how many people out there have gotten an unsolicited dick pic? 
<laughs> Anybody? Excellent, right? In, in the gay world, we love the unsolicited dick pic. It's fantastic. Uh, what we don't like, though, is the unsolicited asshole pic. So we're talking about like full-on spread eagle, sarlacc pit, hello chocolate starfish. And on the one hand, I'm kind of horrified, but simultaneously I'm kind of jealous because I don't think I have the kind of friend that I could just call up and say, do you want to come over and take a picture of my asshole so I could send it to random people on the internet? Actually, I think they're in the audience. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. You were great. Give it up for Ryan Fry.